Hi, so we're gonna configure GitHub to work with Atom, your editor. Actually, you might know Atom is actually the editor created by the GitHub community, so it's especially specifically integrated with the GitHub and Git. Let's go and see what we need. We need that you have installed already Git, the text editor Atom, and you need to have an account on GitHub, and this is optional, but very recommended. You need to, the, you need to have a SSH key. Uh, let's open a shell and usually it's a git bash and win and you should check whether you have git and possibly node.js installed and the first thing you have to do after you open the shell is to introduce yourself to git with this command here that you just copy from the slides you see you have to say to git who you are and that's that's it you copy that comment from the slide you substitute your my name with your name and you press enter if nothing happens that's good you also need to copy this command here oops just need to change Right, now Git knows you and knows your email. The next thing to do here is to uh, open the GitHub repository with the exercises. First, uh, you need to have a GitHub account. If you don't have it, just create it on the page is github.com. I have one already, so I can just sign in. Now I'm in. Um, so this is uh, the dashboard of which shows my uh, repositories on the right, some activities from the people I follow, and some other advertising mostly on the right. Um, the first thing you need to do, you could personalize your profile here with some, uh, oh, sorry, settings. Go on settings, and you can personalize your profile. You can update your name, a picture, a uh, short bio, if you have, I haven't set my handle. Nice, and let's put also note game here. Nice. Um, what I want to do, you can check all these uh, options here, is that you add SSH key. Do, do, do. It's going to be slow, but here it is. This is the page of SSH keys. So it means you need to have one key for every computer that you use. You do add the new SSH key if you click on the new SSH key button over here. And it prompts you to insert the key. So the key is something that looks strange, like this text over here. And you can create one if you follow the instruction on the game wiki. You go on the game wiki and you have this page, Digital Ocean SSH key, but it's actually, uh, it works for any service that needs an SSH key. And this key is just a way to authenticate your computer without the need to enter a password each time. So if you follow these instructions, uh, you will see that you were able to create a key uh, using git bash, uh, using the program called SSH um, what is called SSH dash key generator.x. You just follow the steps that are uh, on, on screen and it will be very easy to, to create. Okay, uh, assuming you get your SSH key, it will be saved under this directory here with this dot SSH dot ID uh, uh, slash ID underscore SA dot pop. Let's have a look how does this. Uh, file look like. Uh, we said .ssh. Now you can do two things. You can use the cat command, which is not about cats and dogs. It's about displaying the output of a file. Int.ssh.pub. So this is the, uh, the long string. That's why what makes it um, hard to, uh, to, um, to fake it. It's a very long string and there is unique relationship with the private key, which I'm not going to show you here. So you can copy like this, copy, or you prefer to open it, you can do start edrsa.pap and it will open it in a standard 
notepad window you copy it and you uh, paste it in your in your key here you give it the title my computer now already I have this key so I don't press the button but you just follow the, the instructions online assuming you have done this you are now password free but high security here is the home page of the course stephanomalytics.com slash teaching slash online experiments you go uh, somewhere towards the middle of the page and you see there is a link to github repository of exercise you click there it opens a new page there are some files uh, this is the description it is a JS course for beginners it focuses on object oriented programming and it's supposed to be a bit funny but only supposed um, you could have you could do two things you could copy the link directly here or it would be even better if you fork it first so you click on the fork so you can imagine the forking process you put your fork and you take a big fork out of it so you actually manage to take it all and you make a copy on your own um, on your own um, account so now I create a copy from this um, Shakti user which I control to the node game repository and there's a new a new uh, copy that I own and I can manipulate the way I want so here we click the code button we select the SSH because we just uh, added the SSH key click the copy button here go back to Atom and we see that we have an option on the bottom right click on git and github so first of all we have an option clone an existing github repository in most versions, you have this option only if there is no other project open so make sure nothing is open on the left hand side click clone an existing repository and you copy the text that you just uh, you paste the, the text you just copied over here so you'll see uh, sometimes you get a strange error like in this case it says clone is not available in present state that could indicate a problem with the internet connection or uh, the directory is already existing and you cannot write uh, above that so you just rename it so you click clone and this time it's supposed to work so it's taking some time it did work good so you have now it recommends you to log into github this is something you can also do uh, click login here it, it says that you could, should go to this address to generate an authentication token let's do this and here we are it asks you to authorize Atom GitHub package to access your account click authorize and also creates uh, a token that you need to copy into Atom here again now click login wow and now you have even more features enabled okay now uh, let's click on the github now here on the on the right hand side you can see the history of previous changes and now we're going to add something to that history let's click on the file readme.md it's exactly the same file that we uh, checked before uh, on here so this is the preview of readme.md and now we are going to make a change um, we're going to remove these two dots over here saved uh, you can see that if you make a change and not saved there is a blue dot here that indicates that the change is not being saved yet okay now we're going to save this and we see there is uh, a list of unstate changes and click on here and see what has been changed you see it goes line by line so it means that in this line we had made these changes uh, which you can see just that we removed two dots we're happy with that so we click on stage hole if there are more than one file that changed you can just select the file that you want to commit to the index and you can give a message here just uh, removed two dots committed the message just to Try to be informative with the things you do because you will remember better how what you change and also sometimes who did that uh, it's also very useful to know okay here we are the changes go into here we are ready to click the push, bu push button over here and this arrow that goes up it means that you're going to push your code to github now 
click there, the arrow is going up. Let's see if this is going to affect the file. So I'm going to make it a bit bigger. So you can see there are three dots here. I'm going to refresh the page, hit refresh. And it's still three dots. You know why? Because I'm not in the um, on my repository. This is the original one. This is the Shakti repository. I want to go on the not game repository. This is the one we forked. So we are doing our um, changes only apply to the repository that we forked. So here there's still three dots, and I'm going to refresh. Now how here they're going to have it's going to be a change to one dot. Oh, perfect. You can see also that my commit message was uploaded here with my username and my nice picture you see this is my description um, it also shows you that uh, there is a, a change from this version of the of the code to the version from which i i copied it so the the original repository which is check the master the one which i checked before but had no update so you can click the compare button here and it tells that you can create a pull request to merge them. So you can do it here, but you can also do it on Atom. So you go to the GitHub page. Uh, oh, yeah, that's one issue. You need you should supposed to create a different branch. So if you work on different branch, you can do this. So here's the the this is actually very useful. So so you're gonna learn also about branches. On the bottom, there is a button that says master. So this is the name of the branch. So you should think of branches like multiple copies of your code, which exists at the same time, but only one is the one which is visible to the operating system. The other one has, are hidden away by Git. So they are there, ready to be used, ready to compare your change against those copies, but only one is in use. So we're gonna create a new copy. So a new branch. So we're going to create a new branch. Uh, I'm going to call it new branch. You can call it the way you want. You should call it in a way which is reflective of the changes that you do. So if usually this is new feature, you give the name of the new feature. Now you see we are a new branch, new branch here. Uh, we're going to uh, add some. This is a change in a new branch. Okay, we're going to do exactly what we did before. Stage all and commit new branch. This is a new commit message. And publish. So it's not push because this is a new branch that does not exist on GitHub yet. So first we published and then we push. The two things go together here. Now it's done. Let's check. Um, our uh, not game code here and says there's a new branch as new pushes uh, and was a less than a minute ago if this is the default branch is the master branch and it shows that there's no changes so you need to select here master and you see the list of all the active branches you can click on new branch and you're now able to see the changes we just did now uh, we are ready to, um, to do the pull request to the original repository so that you can integrate your changes in, in, uh, in another repositories that you do not own. This is the way you usually create uh, patches in open source software. So you use a software, you like it, you create a new features, you, said that you send to the original developer, say, hey, I created this cool feature, would you like to integrate it? So you can create a pull request for it. So if you create a new cool exercise and you want to share it with me, you just feel free to do it. So this is the interface. So the link on Atom creates the pull request on the GitHub uh, web page. You click here, it says, uh, this is not a very, very big change. So this is supposed to describe what you changed and um, you create a pull request and now it's up to the owner of the original repository to accept it or reject it so we go here to our original repository we hit refresh and now there is one pull request 
let's see what's going on. So this is a pull request from a new branch. You can click here, open 13 seconds ago. It says what, what's the difference. It automatically checks whether it can be merged. And if it can be merged, it will just be able to merge. You can uh, see the changes here. What we just did, commit by commit. And if you're happy, you can do merge pull request, confirm merge. And now the changes that we created on our forked repository are transmitted into the original repository. Yes. So this is something I need to delete uh, as well because it's not very useful. Okay, this was a very nice tour of some of the features of um, GitHub, Git and Atom, how do they integrate. So you are now supposed to do the exercises. You can see you can start from the setup. Uh, they are rather easy. There is a lot of text introducing them. Some of that is supposed to be funny, some of that is not. So uh, at some point you will see there is an exercise about hydrogen, which is uh, at the very bottom. We haven't. Mm, if you haven't set it up, please check the video how to set it up. This is a bit more complex, and you um, you shouldn't get it right at the first try. But then if you if you if you do, then you're able to do something like this. Uh, that means pressing Control Enter. This will uh, generate um, a kernel for for JavaScript or Node.js, and it will execute the code right here and give you the output. So this is very useful to make uh, the exercise. All right, that's it. Let's uh, say goodbye.